Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Labyrinth Butterfly, wherever you are listening to this recorded reading. Um, thank you for tuning in. I was not considering doing a reading this full moon. The energies were very intense, and I kind of felt like I needed to lay back and um, step aside. Uh, however, I did post up on my YouTube channel that I will be doing new moon and full moon readings for the Divine Collective. So um, the moon actually woke me up very early this morning slash last night and um, told me that it was important that I do these two readings for the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. So I am going to be starting with the Divine Masculine's reading and also just to be clear, the message I was given was that these were to be communication, directly, clearly communicated messages from the Divine Masculine to the Divine Feminine, as well as the opposite. So this will be a reading from the Divine Masculine to the Divine Feminine um, in and around what is going on for him currently during this new moon phase in Virgo. Um, Another thing I want to point out is that today there are two um, interesting time frames going on with the moon. We have an 11-11 opposition, um, the moon with Mercury. So um, that will be a really exciting moment in this day. And we have a 144 trine with the moon and Venus. So again, I feel like this is the exact right moment for me to be putting out this message, and I'm going to get right into it. And as I was opening my book um, to sit and kind of prepare for this reading, um, something that fell out of my journal was, my cloak slips off. So, and this is a poem from my wee moon journals and if, if you don't know about wee moon journals divine masculine or divine feminine whoever is listening to this um you should definitely check into wee moon uh, i've been using these journals for years and they're really wonderful they keep you in tune with the the moon cycles the sun cycles all of the um holy days the natural holy days that occur the equinoxes the solstices um and just they're so divinely put together by a wonderful group of women. So, without getting into a tangent here, I want these readings to be somewhat clear and concise. Ah, I'm just going to take a deep breath and get into these cards that were pulled under the light of the full moon. So, and I'm using the Enchanted Tarot, um, just to be clear by Amy Zerner, and also clarifying with the mystical tarot and for the masculine, the native spirit oracle cards. So um, that's where we will begin. Okay, so where the masculines want to express to the feminines um, where they are at on this journey in terms of their twin flame connection and how that is reflecting back into their world at this time. The underlying energy that comes through is the Three of Wands and the Enchanted Tarot. And the Three of, of Wands is the Opportunity card. So this is three cherubs. They're all holding up a different aspect, a different wand, and... Um, you know, cherubs, obviously, the symbol of love. They are definitely aware of the gift at this time that this union, this relationship, this um, connection to their divine feminine, they're, they're aware of it, um, and they're seeing it as an opportunity for them. Um, they're becoming more open-minded also as well in terms of what this 
relationship is about. So they're letting the Divine Feminine know um, that this this aspect that that is affecting their, you know, the Cupids represent basically their heart, their mind, and their actions. They've all spontaneously joined together. And this opportunity that's coming through, it's it's an imminent realization of a wish fulfillment for them. So they're realizing that there's just so much energy and light available and there's this creative energy that's going around. So they're becoming more fearless in terms of, of seeing this in its pure sense and for what it truly is and they are awakened to it. So what we go into having that as the underlying energy is the three of hearts. So we have three ballerinas dancing and holding their hearts to the sky and this card is really beautiful because this is showing that the masculines are speaking from their heart so their their hearts are celebrating their hearts are joyful and they feel connected they feel Again, building off of this Three of Wands, they feel like this sense of gratitude for the Divine Feminine. Um, and they're paying attention, you know, um, they're paying attention to what their hearts are, are bringing to them. They're celebrating. Um, and also the hearts here represent the embodiment of faith, hope, and charity happy emotions, you know, that are swirling around in the background and and they're awakened to the joy and the creativity and the happiness um, that really they've realized is a part of this very sacred spiritual relationship and journey for them. And what the Divine Feminine has brought to the table here for them and I think just what this relationship maybe um, is teaching them or has shown them is it's it's brought them the completion that they're seeking because then we come with the world card so this is the completion of the major arcana um, which is really exciting and it's really huge because basically in the last three series of the major arcanas we go from the 19 which is the sun which is the, the radiance and that is the mass the, the divine masculine's card so he's realized who he is then we go through judgment which is the reckoning of that which i do feel that the divine masculines um have gone through definitely some kind of judgment or tower moments or you know but then we get to the world the culmination card you know, um, basically, they've reached the degree of understanding that is enabling them to graduate to a higher level of what this means, what this is, um, to release old cycles and inappropriate habits, leaving that behind in terms of relationships and things that don't serve them anymore, um, ways of interacting with themselves, with the world. Um, and really evolving, you know, they're evolving and they're accepting that they're saying that they know that this is a gift that's, that's everything to them, that's bringing them everything that they've ever dreamed. And so when we get to the end of the major arcana, we go back to the beginning, right? We go back to the fool um, in the cycle, in the circular cycle of the cards themselves. So, you know, the divine masculine knows that this is going to bring him into a whole new phase, but it's he's not there yet. He's just still basically evolving but this level of, of newness and knowing is really 
obvious and it's in the spiritual realm. So again, we have, you know, the passion of, of the wands sparking the heart chakra alignment and then the knowing in the spiritual realm. So then we get the Nine of Swords. So there is a sense that the Divine Masculine is um, expressing that there's somewhat of a, like he's, he's also in this space of like being in a nightmare as well, where um, even though the heart is in total fulfillment and it's sparked and it's alive and the, you know, the world card is here, we also have the Nine of Swords. So this is a time of releasing a lot of fears and of facing a lot of fears and of being in um, just this, you know, realization of having to confront and understand what they've been holding back and, and how they've been holding back. And so the Nine of Swords, actually, the Nightmare card, this is called the Nightmare card, it, it comes after it succeeds, if that's the right word, the Eight of Swords, which is indecision. So the, the masculine is no longer in indecision, but he is expressing that he's in this dark nightmare and the world He's just having to face a lot of demons, repressed hurts, childhood fears, um, you know, things that have been really trapped inside of him. He is looking at the dark side of things. Um, but also, there's a message in this card that expresses, and this will be for the masculine to maybe hear, like, to avoid being a martyr, you know, avoid basically succumbing to those fears because you will be walking through that and when you get to the ten of swords and there is this full completion you know <clears throat> then you can move forward completely but he's expressing here that he's still in a phase of of really having to to face a lot of fears and things like this so then we get to the Two of Pentacles. And the Two of Pentacles is the card of change. So the Divine Masculines are basically telling us, Divine Feminines, that they're learning how to cope with this change of um, awareness of who they are and what their purpose is and how this is supposed to play out. Um... And, and also, this is like a card that speaks about infinite balance. So, it's kind of like the going back and forth of, of change happening. Because there's two snakes in this card, and one snake is light and one snake is dark. So, one is shedding its skin and one is getting ready to shed its skin. And then they switch um, roles, basically. So, I think that this card speaks a lot about divine union and about like the roles that both parties play back and forth um, as we help each other and we continue to communicate. I think that communication is really important. But being as it's a pentacles card, this is a material world, you know, matrix level card. So he is trying to balance during this period of change and there's instability for him um, and he's, he's trying to focus on more than one thing at a time so this is a challenge and it's difficult but um, as long as he's staying centered and he is keeping himself informed he has more flexibility and versatility and um, he's seeking from the Divine Feminine, like, how to go about continuing this 
this path of change um, because basically that card is clarified by the chariot so that's a really positive um, message that he is choosing to move forward so just to kind of snake our way back down I like that idea since we're going from this snake energy of these cards we we do get the chariot another major arcana the chariot is the 12 card and you know the the fact that the masculine has the chariot like it just is wonderful to see um because he's daring he's at this point he's he's taking risk he's choosing to become half of this whole if you will but not really half of a whole i want to say like what what i see here when you look at the two of pentacles card next to the chariot it's not a half of a whole anymore i'm going to say this like clearly it's not a half of a whole it's two holes because the chariot is two horses it's a you know it's being drawn by two horses and it's clearly the moon and the sun energy that is you know shining on one side of the chariot as well as you know the dark side of the, the moon light on the other side of the chariot we have a black horse we have a white horse um, we have wings here on the horses and this card is totally a union card okay um and it's a significant significant chart like it's basically it's basically saying he's leveled up you know because the chariots here has more advantage over you know warriors who are battling on foot um, he has a wider viewpoint, he has increased speed, he has physical protection, uh, and it takes skill and a daring personality and drive to drive a, car a chariot, you know, um, so the Divine Masculine is basically saying here that he is daring to move swiftly towards his next level of success and of understanding of what this union, uh, this relationship, this twin flame journey is all about. And so, you know, snaking back into the sword energy where we have this, you know, nightmare kind of still happening and playing out we have a, um, a page here. We have a page of swords. So the page is an intelligent young person, but also they tend to think they know more than they know. So the masculine is saying that he doesn't know everything about this. You know, he doesn't know everything about it, but he's still really willing to move forward and to learn and um, to gain more understanding and experience with what this journey is. So he's got his, his focus forward and the page is, is looking forward at the chariot card. So this is a movement, this is a, a mental process of analyzing what this journey is about and moving forward on this journey so he is telling us clearly that that he um is choosing to understand and with the world card with this recognition this, this basically has flipped his world upside down we have the king of cups in reverse and the king of cups you know the emotional nature of of the cups um the intuitive perception you know the cups rule relationships um this this king his world has been totally flipped upside down and for a lot of masculines this is also you know brought up a lot of change in whatever relationships they currently were having with themselves with other people 
um, with work-related issues, um, with a lot of different things. Um, basically, you know, this spiritual king who rides atop the sea of emotions, um, you know, rather than submerging himself and losing himself, I mean, he is basically, I feel like what the message here is, is that he is choosing to submerge. He is choosing to really dive deep um, into how this is emotionally affecting him. So it's thrown off his equilibrium somewhat. It's definitely thrown him for a loop. And that is being clear because, you know, like, I get it. You know, being thrown off by something this major, this is like life transformation. This is life-changing information. And it's not, it does change everything. So, yeah. But he's still moving forward. So that's really a nice message to hear. And also, again, with the Three of Hearts being clarified by the Six of Swords, you know, mentally, okay, because the swords are mental, mentally, um, he's processing his move forward. He's following his heart with this move forward. So that's a really nice message to hear, too. So you have, basically, in this card, the masculine form, um, the feminine, and the child. So I look at this less as, well, it could be looked at both ways. You have, you know, the totality of the family. So he's moving forward um, in his mental process of what his divine family looks like. And this boat is, you know, being pushed across this large body of water towards new lands, towards universal um, planetary alignments, towards the center of his star. But also, rather than looking at it as an outside source, he's telling us he's moving towards his wholeness, his whole completion of self, where he's following his own star at this point because his heart is filled with faith and hope and understanding of what this journey is. Um, and he's moving away. He's telling us he's moving away from current difficulties um, and that may take time, but he's gathering his strength. So, really beautiful. And, and the underlying energy of the mystical tarot, um, we have the ace of wands. And so that's clarifying this three of wands, this, you know, this connection of, of like looking towards the future and the wands are the passion, the wands are the fire, you know, the, the masculine is, is really, again, clarifying that he knows that this is a gift, um, and he's, he's, he's willing to seize it now at this point, he's got the chariot card, he wants to seize it. There's, um, he has courage behind this. He has self-determination. Um, you know, his dragon energy is with him. This card shows the two trees side by side. The union, the, you know, castle up on the hill. This is it for the Divine Masculine. He definitely is aware and awakened to the knowing that this is where he wants to take himself in the future. And he's doing it from a heart-centered space, from a spiritual space, from a mental space. 
and even from a material space. Like we have all of the worlds represented here, which is really, in all honesty, him saying that he's able to process this in each and every world. You know, there's it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's, it's full culmination. It's full recognition. So the Native American, well, Native spirit cards, excuse me, I refer to them as the Native American spirit cards, but the Native spirit cards um, that fell out for messages for the Divine Feminine from the Divine Masculine are the Medicine Woman and Medicine Man. So he's absolutely understanding, oh, Excuse me, let me backtrack for one second because the underlying energy here being clarified with these cards is the wounded healer. So he's letting us know that he's healing himself, he's healing his wounds, he is um, really working on his internal um, processing of, again, the, the dark side of his nature and what's going on with this Nine of Swords energy for him that he's moving through mentally. Um, so there's a lot of processing going on, but the wounded healer does become the healer. So, um, and that's what I love to see when we come to the medicine woman and medicine man, because that is the divine masculine saying, um, he knows that he's a medicine man and he knows that his divine feminine is a medicine woman. And he knows that this, this balance of equality you know, again, being followed by the chariot card, um, this is what's really driving him, is knowing that he has found his equal, he's found his mirror, he's found his perfect um, balance in another outside of self that is ultimately inside of self. So the choice here is to walk in beauty. The choice here is to um, really follow the sun at this point and follow his path, which is, you know, being a strong ray of the sun. Um, and again, we see this in the walking in beauty card. We have a picture of, of arches. This is like Zion, you know, this is walking through this gateway and he's saying, I'm, I'm walking through this gateway, you know, like I know where I'm going. He knows where he's going. He knows where his home is. And we also get sweat lodge, which I just love because it's like, you know, these other two cards are, are more orange and bright and colorful. And then we have like the dark night, um, the dark blue the nighttime scene of the sweat lodge with the fire burning outside in the front of it. And, you know, this is really the masculine telling the feminine that he is doing the work. He's doing the internal processing, the purging, the deepening of his own understanding of this journey. And as, as this process happens for him like these are the the awakenings that he's having these are the understandings that he's having so yeah I just I think that these are just so beautiful so I'm gonna do one more thing uh, oh but I wasn't going to but I feel like John to do this because you know I do feel like the divine masculine has a lot to say and a lot that he wants to communicate um and a lot of divine masculines are not able to do that right now because they are taking this time um aside to themselves and it's totally necessary and it's very 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 good um that these are the messages that are coming through and i'm going to ask the rumi oracle for a poem and a message from the Divine Masculine to his Divine Feminine, um, you know, not just how he feels towards her, but just 
whatever comes through, whatever he needs to say. Whoa. The all-encompassing hand and the cosmic heart underneath. So I will read for the all-encompassing hand. Um, it's, it is a moon card, so that's really in alignment with us being a full moon reading. We have a full moon in the card with a goddess. Um, and it's just, yeah, okay. The all-encompassing hand, and it reads, You are the essence of my existence. Who am I? A mirror in your hand? Whatever you do, I will do. I am your irresistible reflection. With every breath, I feel my heart is beating with yours. In your joy, I'm exuberant. In your sadness, I am in sorrow. In your bitter, I become bitter. If you are grace, I become grace. My joy is when I am bewildered in your beauty and taste the sweetness of love on your lips. If I pick a rose without you, it becomes a thorn in my hand. If I am the thorn, I become the rose in your hand, Rumi. That is so sweet and so beautiful and such a sweet message coming from the Divine Masculine um, who has really at this point been able to see the gift of what this divine union and relationship is in his life and what he sees it bringing into his future. So thank you all for listening. I hope this could be of assistance and um, really help you in whatever way you need help on your journey. And please um, tune in for the Divine Feminine's um, message to her divine masculine which will be the next reading following this um, please like share and subscribe to this channel and you can also follow me on instagram at labyrinth underscore butterfly and i truly feel honored and full of grace and light whenever i do these readings and share these with the collective so um, as much as i can get out of the way i do and as I continue to practice this um, process of receiving divine messages to share with everybody, um, I give so much thanks for your tuning in and listening, which gives me the reason to continue doing them. So in love and light, I wish you all the best of this closing window of the full moon and um, stay tuned for more. Much love.